Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining me today for our second virtual team safety meeting and for being so patient with Jeff and I for the first one. Hopefully we have simplified things today. And if you have any suggestions for improvement, they are always welcome. Now, with all the restrictions the government has placed on us, many drivers have told me that they are bored. Great news. I have a solution. The Joint Health and Safety Committee invites you to join their next meeting on Tuesday, May 18th at 10 a.m via Zoom. Bring your safety issues or concerns for some engaging discussions. All are welcome to join, but it's not mandatory. Just let me know you are interested and I will email the Zoom link for the meeting to you. Okay, let's get started uh, with the presentation. I'm going to share my screen with my uh, PowerPoint. All right, and we'll start our slideshow. So welcome to the Spring Campo Team Safety Meeting. Spring into safety. From our Winter Team Safety Meeting, I'd like to congratulate uh, Val Oliver for having a perfect score, Courtney O'Donnell with one wrong, Richard Bauer, Helen Dreyer, Anne-Marie Hewitt, and Joanne Zilster for having two wrong. Okay, our topics today are defensive driving refresher and spring driving. All right, so let's get started with the defensive driving refresher. So a defensive driver is a driver who drives in such a way so as to prevent him or her from becoming involved in a collision in spite of the incorrect actions of other drivers or due to adverse driving conditions. A strong emphasis is placed on being a safe defensive school bus driver because you want to avoid collisions, injuries, and loss of life. Note, a preventable collision is one in which you as a driver fail to do everything reasonable to prevent it. Okay, so there is going to be some reading on the LLC defensive driving. Okay, the information is attached, attached to your team safety meeting email in a PDF form. Okay, this is what it looks like. All right, so I'm gonna um, end the presentation here because we're gonna watch the LLC defensive driving uh, video. Okay, so let's try and go to a new share here. So let's watch our video. Hi, and welcome back. I'm here with Mary to talk about the four driving principles of safety. That's right, but I've come to remember it as the triple LC method. Look ahead, look around, leave room, and communicate and that's what this course is all about we're going to help you learn the four driving principles of safety or the triple lc method and how you can use it to prevent accidents while driving so please pay close attention this topic is very important and the techniques you learned today will make you a much better safer driver Carry on to the intro here. In any traffic situation, these principles help you maintain the maximum amount of room around your vehicle. They help improve your visibility and they provide you with extra time to make decisions while driving. So Mary, what is driving principle number one? 
Driving principle number one is look ahead. Okay, let's see how that looks. Look ahead means you look far ahead of the bus while driving. To do this, use a 15 second eye lead time. In other words, you look 15 seconds ahead of where the bus is at any given point in time. If you look ahead 15 seconds at 30 miles per hour, you'll see 650 feet or about one and a half city blocks down the road. Right now, our driver is looking all the way out to this point. On the highway at 50 miles per hour, that same 15 second eye lead time extends your vision to at least 1,100 feet ahead. That's nearly a quarter of a mile. Now the driver is looking out this far in front of the bus to this point. Now that's what we mean when we say look ahead. Unfortunately, most drivers only look three or four seconds ahead, usually watching the nearest vehicle in front of them. They rarely look into the distance. That means that if a problem develops up ahead, the driver only has a few seconds to see it, evaluate it, decide what to do, and take action. That's not enough time, and that's a major reason why many accidents happen. By always using the look ahead principle, you can identify potential hazards early so you have enough time to make adjustments. For example, you may need to adjust your speed or change lanes, but you'll have plenty of time to do it if you're always looking ahead and you'll always avoid unnecessary stops and starts, which are uncomfortable for you and your passengers. Has this ever happened to you? You're driving along on a busy road. Traffic is moving, okay. Then you notice road construction ahead of you. You have to slow down or sometimes even stop. If you look ahead, you can anticipate this and start slowing down gradually, avoiding a panic stop. Now, look ahead helps prevent accidents, but not all by itself. We'll cover three other driving principles of safety in a minute, but first, let's review. Look ahead involves distance and gives you time to react. It's a seeing and thinking habit that develops over time through constant practice. As a school bus driver, you have to look farther ahead than a car driver because a school bus is bigger and heavier and needs more time and distance to stop. Your superior seeing habits will help make up for those limitations. Remember, always look ahead a minimum of 15 seconds. Okay, we're going to skip the questions because they'll be on your PDF on your uh, team safety meeting email. Obviously, the information you need to drive safely isn't just in front of you, it's all around you. And that's what the second principle is all about. Look around. Principle number two, look around, means you have to take in the entire scene when you're driving especially when driving a school bus. To be aware of your surroundings, you have to constantly move your head and eyes to see everything around the bus. Look around for cars, pedestrians, and fixed or movable objects in or near the road. Make sure you look around while turning and anticipate other driver's actions or what pedestrians might do. Look around means you change your point of focus at least every other second. That's right, every two seconds, you should be looking at something new. If you constantly look around, you can anticipate the unexpected and make adjustments as necessary. But if you drive with a fixed stare, you don't always see everything around you. And that's dangerous because it's constantly changing. With a fixed stare, you only see what's right in front of you, and you might not see a hazard in or near the road. Daydreaming, which is, often comes from fatigue, is another hazard that develops from having a fixed stare. Constant eye movement keeps you alert and aware. It helps you use your two types of vision, peripheral and central. Normal peripheral vision sees about 90 degrees to each side for a total view of 180 degrees. So if you keep your eyes moving, you extend your peripheral vision, which means you're rarely taken by surprise. Look around also means that you check your mirrors. Your mirrors increase your range of vision even more. 
you should check your mirrors every five to eight seconds. Constantly moving your head and eyes and checking your mirrors gives you more information and increased awareness of what's going on around your bus. Here's one way you can put this into practice. At intersections, look left, right, and left again before proceeding. Check the left twice because the first vehicle that could hit you will usually come from that side. Look around for pedestrians and other vehicles. Remember, they may not be paying attention to you or the other traffic around them, and that's when accidents can happen. And as you drive down the road, make sure you maintain an adequate following distance of at least four seconds, and oftentimes more. Just like the principals look ahead and look around, maintaining your proper following distance gives you time to make decisions. If you're too close to a vehicle in front of you, you won't have time to react. You need to maintain room around your bus on all sides and at all times. A four second following distance gives you control. It provides room for the school bus to stop and time to make decisions. To figure the four second following distance, scan ahead to find a fixed reference point, a sign, stoplight, or other road element will do. Then when the vehicle in front of you passes that object, count off four seconds like this, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004. You should reach the object at or after four seconds. If you reach the object in less than four seconds, you're following too closely. Slow down and increase your following distance to at least four seconds. Of course, other drivers will often pull in front of you. When that happens, adjust your speed to create more room between you. That will give you more time so you can safely react to the unexpected. By maintaining a four second following distance, you'll have plenty of time to check your mirrors and scan the road to look around. In poor weather or limited visibility, you want to increase your following distance to five seconds or more. That about does it for driving principle number two, look around. Remember to use your mirrors and scan the road, be aware of your surroundings, and to maintain the proper following distance. All right, just stay with me. I'm gonna change discs here and we'll watch the second part of this. Okay, I'm gonna skip the questions again. All right, here we go. I can see how the first two principles work together. Look ahead and look around. Both help you have an extended view of the entire scene. Yeah, and if you know what's going on ahead of you and around you and have at least four second following distance, you'll have plenty of time to react to a traffic incident. Leaving room around your bus is another way to avoid trouble, and that's principle number three, leave room. Leaving room around your bus allows you to make adjustments. It buys you time. Ideally, you'll want room on all six sides of the bus. In front, which you'll maintain and monitor by keeping an adequate following distance. In the rear, on each side of the bus, and above and below the bus. The easiest place to leave room is right in front of your bus. Just simply adjust your speed to maintain your following distance as traffic darts in and out from in front of you. The areas to your sides and rear are a little harder to keep clear. Sometimes to maintain room in the rear, you have to actually slow down a bit to motivate an impatient tailgater to move to another lane or back off. If the other driver doesn't change lanes, looking ahead and maintaining a four second following distance helps you control the problem. When traffic is congested and other cars and trucks are all around you, at least be sure to leave room in front of you. You can't always leave room to your sides, but when you're on the highway, adjust your speed when someone's driving right next to you at the same speed. One thing's for sure, we have to adjust for other drivers' mistakes. I know, I've been accused of tailgating, but it wasn't me. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times other drivers have cut me off. Then I have to slow down to reestablish my following distance. 
And just when you've done that, some other driver cuts you off. <laughs> That's true. That's why you always have to leave room. You also have to leave room above and below the bus. Be on the lookout for low overhead clearances. And remember, they're not always marked with a warning sign. Keep an eye out for road conditions that could cause the bus to bottom out or debris in the road. Use the first two driving principles to scan the road and know what's going on ahead and around you. Maintain your four second following distance. If you look ahead and look around, you'll see trouble before it's too late and you'll have time to safely react to it. We can't emphasize enough how important it is to leave room around your bus, especially when it comes to the four second following distance. Think about it. If everyone in front of you always acted like they were supposed to, you wouldn't need this extra room. But we know other drivers just don't drive professionally, and we have to expect the unexpected. Expecting the unexpected means the car ahead of you sees the turn at the last minute and stops suddenly. A child or an animal runs out in front of you. A car suddenly pulls over on the highway due to an emergency, like a flat tire. Traffic in the opposing lane crosses into your lane. As a professional driver, you need to leave room for all these possibilities and others that may happen at any time. That's why you must keep a minimum four second following distance on dry pavement day or night. Maybe you're thinking, well, I've driven less than four seconds driving distance and I've never had an accident. So why change now? Well, every time your following distance is less than four seconds, you're practicing an unsafe behavior. And as we learned in the basics of safety course, if repeated enough times, that unsafe behavior will always lead to an accident. It's just like we said before, we have to allow for other driver's mistakes because you never know when the vehicle in front of you will do the unexpected. And if you're following too closely, you won't have enough time to react and you'll end up rear-ending the car in front of you or going off the road, both of which would be your fault and potentially very serious. Just because it doesn't happen or hasn't happened before, doesn't mean it won't happen tomorrow or the next day. That's why the four second following distance is so important. Remember, imagine the unexpected, leave room, and always maintain at least a four second following distance. Leave room is good advice for any driver, but especially important for a school bus driver. Because of the bus's size, it'll take you longer to stop. But if you can anticipate trouble, you can avoid accident-causing situations. Leave room also allows you to safely change lanes if trouble develops in front of you without the need to make emergency maneuvers or panic stops. Okay, again, we're going to skip the questions because they'll be on your email. All right, there we go. Last but not least, driving principle number four is communicate. In other words, make sure the other drivers know you're there and what you're going to do next. Of course, you probably think they know you're there, but through experience, we've learned that some people seem to think we're invisible. Other drivers and pedestrians aren't always as attentive and safety conscious as you are. And even though you're driving a big yellow school bus, sometimes people don't even notice you're there. So what do you do? Communicate. First, a friendly tap on the horn is a good way to get someone's attention. But you still have to give a quick glance to make sure they know you're there. Try to make eye contact. Use your headlights, brake lights, and turn signals to communicate your intentions. Be sure to use your signals before turning or changing lanes and always allow at least four flashes before taking any action. Even when you're driving safely and should have the right of way, other drivers make mistakes. Whether it's a car or a pedestrian, communicating will go a long way toward preventing accidents. Now that we've gone over all four principles, let's take a moment to review. The four driving principles of safety are look ahead, look around, 
lead, move, and communicate. The four driving principles of safety give you extra room and time, room for the bus, and time to make decisions. If you practice the four driving principles of safety, you'll be a better, safer driver. And that's our goal for you, the pedestrians, and other motorists who share the road. And most importantly, our passengers, the children you transport every day. All right, so we're going to share the screen back to the PowerPoint. Slideshow. Okay, so we watched our video. Then you can go to the team safety meeting email and print off your quizzes there for that. Um, that's the defensive driving quiz. It's a little different format, but the same questions. There's five questions. And then the defensive driving refresher quiz. Okay, there is a test simulator that's going to be attached to the email. It's just for fun. You can give that a try if you like. All right, on to spring driving. Spring is here and that means longer days and warmer weather. Also means no more snow and ice covered roads. Hooray! Since we don't have to worry about sliding on slick roads or getting stuck in snowstorms, most drivers assume that better weather makes for safer driving conditions. Whoa, slow the bus down. Spring brings a number of new hazards to the road that drivers need to pay attention to, and this training will address some of the most important points to remember to ensure you and your passengers arrive safely. Shifting from winter to spring driving actually causes many accidents and not just because of changing weather. Transport Canada found that most people drive more cautious on snow and ice. However, the same approach to careful driving is not carried over to wet roads often seen in spring. While spring may not seem like it poses as much danger as winter, the constant rainfall and oil slicks combined with the warm sun can make road conditions dangerous. And this can lead to auto accidents if drivers are not aware of the main hazards that await them on the road. Okay, I have uh, six short videos to watch. Okay, so actually, sorry, I'm gonna end the slideshow here. All right, and then we go to our videos. So the first one here, okay, actually there's the uh, defensive driving simulator there. Okay, that's what it looks like. It's um, just takes a couple of minutes. It's uh, in Toronto, Ontario. Okay, so all right. So this is our first video on potholes. You're driving along and bang, all of a sudden your car doesn't feel right. Maybe it's pulling, something's vibrating, or it's making a weird noise. Congratulations, you just hit a pothole and it's gonna cost you. That's because your car was designed for the kinds of roads you see in car commercials while we increasingly drive on the kinds of roads you see in Mogadishu. Transportation research group TRIP estimates that 27% of our major urban roads are in poor condition and just 31% in good shape. And their top five metros with lousy roads are all in areas that don't have hard winters. So there goes that excuse. TRIP also estimates that in the worst area, LA, Long Beach, Santa Ana, motorists average over $800 annually in road condition related car maintenance. And across the country, the average is almost $400. Now bear in mind, TRIP is backed by road builders, among others who want the government to spend more on road work. But all it takes is one trip to most countries in Western Europe to realize how bad the roads are in the U.S. Today's low profile tires take a beating on potholes and they in turn don't do much to cushion the rim of that alloy wheel. Okay, some practical strategy. Look ahead at the road. This should go without saying, but I can't tell you how many people drive right through a huge pothole and are surprised. Don't tailgate. That kills your visibility of potholes directly ahead. Brake before a pothole, not in it. Doing that just puts more stress on your tire, wheel, and suspension. Drive straight through a pothole. Turning too late to avoid it means you're turning in the middle of it. 
and that further exposes your tire's sidewall and the face of your wheel. Now, Michelin offers a pothole-resistant tire in some markets, but talk to your tire shop. They see everything come in off the road, and they'll know which tires have a tougher sidewall than others. Most importantly, it pays to double-check if there's a pothole ahead and avoid it. Okay, next video we're going to watch here. Uh, dangers of sun glare. The glare from the sun is being blamed for a crash involving a school bus and a truck full of propane. This happened early this morning as the sun was rising in Dark County near Arcanum. The sheriff's deputies say the bus was empty when it stopped at a stop sign, but didn't see the truck and pulled out in front of it. It's a common problem during this time of year. And Elise Coulter is live right now to show us how you can stay safe from the sun's glare. Elise? The sun is most intense for drivers during the early morning hours. And in fact, right now as it's starting to set, but there are some things that you can do to make sure you're safe. Driving into the sunset or sunrise might sound romantic, but it can be dangerous. It's hard to see. With a glare, even with the visor down and your sunglasses on, I'm always afraid somebody will pull out in front of me. The sun's lower in the sky at this time of year, and it's right in their line of vision. So, it, you know, it's hard to kind of get that position where you can see around it. Nationally, only a fraction of deadly crashes are caused by the sun's glare, 195 out of more than 56,000 fatal crashes a year, according to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. But according to AAA, you should still take steps to stay safe. If you're having trouble seeing what's ahead of you, please allow more room between you and that vehicle. While it might seem like common sense, washing your windshield is one of the best ways to help reduce the glare from the sun. The dirt on there can increase the glare and make it harder for you to see. If you're driving and the glare is just too much, give yourself some extra time. If you cannot see, do not pull out. You know, you just may have to wait a couple minutes, move your vehicle a little bit. Try to get in a better position where you can see. Be very cautious. Don't go over the speed limit and look out for the other guy because you never know what he's going to do. Triple A also suggests if you're actually driving away from the sun, these cars here are behind me, to turn on your headlights. That way, the cars driving towards you can see you. We're now reporting live in Kettering Lee, Coulter, ABC 22 News. Okay, our next video. Oops. Okay. All right, trying to get my video to come up here. On cyclists. Ouch, that hurt. My name is Paul, and I went to hell and back to show you traffic do's and don'ts. Here I go, making my first mistake. Overtaking should happen on the driver's side. Don't do what I did. It's called undertaking, and it's always a bad idea. Where am I now? The worst place you can be, the blind spot. Drivers cannot see me here, and I could be in real danger, so don't risk it. Now take a look at this car. It's way too close to me. That's a common mistake. Drivers, please give cyclists one meter of clearance in urban areas and 1.5 meter outside the city limits. Now we're cycling side by side, and that's a silly thing to do. We're two cyclists, not 20. Don't do this unless riding in a big group. And we're not even dressed for this. I'm almost invisible, and she has no helmet. Crazy. Get lights, wear bright colors, and a helmet, and that will keep you safe. Can you believe this car? That's a very dangerous move called a right hook, and it could have ended way worse. Drivers always signal before making a turn. I hope no one else has to experience this. Always double check for cyclists before opening doors. Remember this one, because it's seriously hurt. I am a professional stuntman. We did all of this so you'll know how to prevent dangerous situations and share the road responsibly. Stay on the safe side with welovecycling.com. Okay.
Okay, I apologize. I don't have my video uh, for children. So we'll go to this one for wildlife. The 60 second driver. A collision with a wild animal can be catastrophic. You and your family could be seriously hurt and your car could be wrecked. To lessen your chances of being involved in a wildlife collision, be alert and slow down when you see an animal crossing sign. Animals can be found anywhere, even within the city. Peak wildlife times are from dusk to dawn in the fall. If you see an animal on the road, slow down and brake firmly to avoid or minimize a collision. Avoid swerving as this can cause a more serious collision. If a collision is unavoidable, your number one concern after the crash should be to protect yourself. Move your vehicle off the road. You should never approach an injured animal. It could hurt you or itself while trying to escape. Call your local road authority to remove the animal. And remember, wearing your seatbelt is one of the best ways to prevent injury in any collision. For more driving tips, watch the 60 Second Driver Thursdays at 6 on CTV News. Brought to you by Manitoba Public Insurance. All right. Specific conditions. Specific weather conditions require specific responses in addition to the rules of thumb mentioned before. Of all inclement weather situations, you're most likely to find yourself caught in the rain. In addition to our two rules of thumb, you should also turn on your car's running lights when it's raining. If the rain is heavy, turn on your low beams. This will increase the chances that you will be seen by other drivers, pedestrians, and cyclists. Road surfaces are most slippery immediately after the rain begins to fall. This is because the oil and grease on the pavement have not yet been washed away. Driving on a road covered with oil and water can be like driving on ice. You should reduce your speed, use extra caution, and allow twice the normal following distance. Losing control of your car on wet pavement is a frightening experience. Unfortunately, it can happen unless you take preventative measures. You can prevent skids by driving slowly, and especially on curves, steer and brake with a light touch, when you need to stop or slow, do not brake hard or lock the wheels and risk a skid. Maintain mild pressure on the brake pedal. If you do find yourself in a skid, remain calm. Ease your foot off the gas, apply the brakes, and steer in the direction you want the front of the car to go. This is called steering into the skid. Okay, so back to the team safety the, uh, the slideshow. Okay, so we watched our uh, videos. There's going to this be the spring driving sheet where you fill in the blanks. That's what it looks like. So each section, the words are underneath each section attached to your email. Now by being aware of the driving hazards that are associated with the spring season and by knowing how to navigate them, you can reduce your chances of being involved in a situation that could extensively damage your bus and seriously injure yourself, your passengers, other drivers, pedestrians, and animals. Don't put yourself or anyone else at risk during the spring. Be aware, make smart decisions, and drive with extreme caution. A tragedy is the last thing any driver wants. All right, return the quizzes by April 27th. Uh, sign the defensive driving log in the office. Thank you, Team Campbell, for your continued commitment to safely transporting our most precious cargo, our children, during these unprecedented times. Give yourselves a pat on the back and keep up the great work, everyone. And go Team Campbell! <laughs>